So the first question is about kind of a, the feelings of the, the researcher community about this uh, systematic data management and this secondary use of data among the researchers. So, so, I mean, do you see challenges there and do you see the attitudes developing in, in a good way or and what are somehow the, I mean, are, are there obstacles to overcome in this kind of this uh, research and culture? Are, are things going somehow smoothly? And uh, somehow primarily look at the kind of the presenters and if, if anyone wants to kind of comment on this kind of attitudes and how they are and where should they go. So. Well, I mean, so I, I hear quite frequently that we need to change the attitude and the culture of the researchers to do what we want them to do, which is to cite data and make their things accessible and share publicly. And I agree that that is partially necessary, but I think that what would really be helpful is actually to enable them doing it. So sometimes I get the feeling that we, we claim that researchers don't want to do it. Right now, if we want to do it, it's hell of a lot of additional work that mm. I don't want to do it. And it's not that I don't want to share the data or make it accessible or cite it. It's just I want to avoid additional work beyond my research. So I think if we want to change this culture, if we want to increase adoption of those principles and um, open science, we just need, we just, in inverted commas, need to provide the services. And if it's easy enough, transparent enough, automated enough, if it mm. happens almost naturally, researchers will be much more likely to adopt it. I'm, I'm not saying that everybody then will jump to it and do it immediately, but um, I guess you know, lowering the, the barrier for them mm. to do it will, will make it much easier. Yeah. So if, if I, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> <Please don't. laughs> while you are moving the microphone, so can, can I add to this the, I mean, there was this notion, I think, yesterday that we should have, how was this kind of a 50,000 or half a million data stewards who would take care of this? Stewarding the data, so if you, I mean, kind of, kind of the question, in the in the long run, so should this be the researchers' responsibility, or should there be people hired to do this uh, service, provide the service to the researchers? So okay, so um, I agree with Andy. Um, we do need to make it easier for researchers to cite their data. Uh, we need to provide the services. But um, if they don't know that they actually can cite data in the first place, they're not going to think to look. So in my data centre, we had for a good 10, 15 years information on our metadata catalogue web pages saying, please cite this data set as, and then a citation string. And nobody ever used it because they didn't think it was possible, they didn't think it was appropriate, they, they just didn't do it. Um, so yes, we need to make it easy for them to do that, and we can. The technology is there, it's not groundbreaking. We need to, need to make it easy and usable, but we also need to tell them that it, it is the right thing to do. And I think that's where the real, the real culture changes. And that's what I was thinking now, and I've missed what you said just there, I'm afraid. Well, just uh, yesterday there was, I think was a little discussion about whether this um, kind of a setting up the data properly with the kind of the metadata and, and whatnot. So whether this is the researcher's responsibility or should there be services to kind of help them. So the researchers are just to walk to the name, friendly neighborhood data steward and ask them to please yes. set up my... I think the answer to that is yes for both of them uh -huh. because the, researcher, the researcher is the person who knows the data set the best. Mm. They know all the details. A, a data steward might be able to help make suggestions for formats and put things in the mm. right places in the metadata schema, mm. but they won't know the intricate details of the calibration of mm. the instrument that was used. Mm. They, the data steward just won't know that information. Mm. So I think it's a partnership mm. that really has to be done. Yeah. So in, in your organization, do you have this kind of a data steward arrangement? Yes. There are people to support. Yeah. So um, in my organization, um, in my group for our data centers, we have data scientists whose job is to talk to the um, the, the creators of data sets and ask them for information which they then take, the data scientists then take that information from the PIs and they put it in the right bits of the metadata catalogue mm. to ensure that it's um, properly linked up and, and they do checks and stuff on data formats and standardise things and generally make sure that the information that we get from the PI is as usable as it possibly can be. Okay, okay. okay there are now so many requests for 
Let, let me go in order here. So, Esa Pekka and then Tobias. And then, then. Yes, on a general level, I, of course, wholly agree that, that, that there must be support for the researchers in, in achieving these things. However, it's a two-way street. Uh, I don't think it will be possible to accommodate to every odd quirk and uh, old, practice, uh, old practice of every researcher and every small discipline. So as long as there are just uh, the 600 different metadata practices within biology alone, so no service scales up to that. So, so it must be a discussion and dialogue between what is, what is being done in the research and how that can be supported. I think Sarah drew a uh, parallel from a scientific publication. You know how it works. There's a title, there's an abstract, there are the, there's the author's name, here are references, and you can get a glance of it and a, and a librarian can work with a, with a scientific journal very easily because they're all the same. So that's something that we should strive forward with research data too. Um, I wanted to iterate on a point that, that Andy started with um, about uh, making, making sure that the, that, the, that the citation that is out there is, is of course findable and easily accessible. And when I think about my own, my own use cases and when, what we are doing, to me it also comes down about if I, if I provide these, these additional services and that can mean some, some, some tool that I provide or, or a web service or something like that. It is, very, it is very hard to actually understand why it is used or why it is not used unless you do some, some larger user study. Now, larger user study is, is complicated and expensive thing, right? I can do some things on, on, on tracking user movements on a web page and so on and so on. But, but still, I think that is also something that needs to be considered. Making, making exact studies of how people are using things and finding out why why these services would not be used. And that can also mean perhaps there might be just be easy things like, like the, the citation string on a landing page is just placed in a, as an, at an odd location where the, where the researcher just doesn't look or it's not obvious that it can be done because it's, it's placed too far at the bottom or something like that. There can be easy things li like that and they are, they are very easy to miss unless one goes through this additional hoop and, and does such a user study. So that would, that would, from my point of view, be a, a good way to address these things. My question was back to you about the data stewards. Uh, do they assist the scientists at the mere beginning of the research project when they are supposed to describe the data management plan and maybe decide on which metadata to collect already from the beginning? This one is yours. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, so yes, um, in an ideal world, we would know what a um, project would be when they get awarded the grant, and that's beginning to start to happen now. And we would get in touch with um, the PIs at that point to um, help them kind of with their data management plans and um, identify what data they're going to be collecting, what metadata they need to collect, how they're going to store it, what they're going to do with it, when we can expect the data to actually come into our archives, that sort of thing. That is becoming more likely now as people are more used to data management planning. Um, in the past, if there have been many a situation where we have had a project where the data um, has been literally dumped on us by the PI at the end of the project saying, don't ask me any questions, just take it. And in that sort of situations, we throw our hands up and go, oh, all right then, but it's not ideal. Um, but yeah, we're in a better situation now in that we are getting in contact with the PIs and we work with them over the course of the entire project to, to, to help them make things easier for them. Because if, it, if, we, if we can make things easier for them, it makes our lives easier as well. We don't have to hassle them afterwards. Yeah, I, I wanted to say that I, I also agree that the, the data stewards are needed, but the researchers have to also uh, better in this. Uh, but I, I wanted to add about the uh, bibliographic or data citation, whatever you call it. We often say bibliographic citation to the data set. Uh, we have been providing this standard model for, well, since we started, I think. Some years ago, we uh, changed it so that it uh, refers 
first to the author so that it could be cited the same way as the publications are cited. And um, uh, we actually don't know how well the researchers who are really using the data are really following our instructions. But it's, the, it's actually a requirement for the reusers that they should use the citation when they are using the data in their publications. So, can you say, <coughs> so you have this, this Finnish social science? Yeah. Archive. So, so how does this resolution, the reference resolution work in your case? I mean, there has to be, the, the citation has to lead to a data set. Yes. So how, how does this move? Where does this kind of this, how, how, the, how what's the point there from the citation? Mm. I'm not sure what, uh, how to. Uh, I mean, I, 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 read, I read the paper in the social sciences, and then yeah. this refers to data sets. How do I get the data sets? Where do I find the data sets? Uh, from Etsin or from our data catalog? Well, we, we use URLs. Uh, yeah. Okay, there's a URL and kind yeah. of point there. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'd actually want to push on to the next topic if you. Oh, sorry. Yes. Sorry, I forgot about the mic. See? <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so the other kind of area of questions in my, on my list involves uh, infrastructure. So, that's kind of this mostly to the Nordic participants. So, so do, you, do you feel that you have sufficient infrastructure available? So, data centers, data archives, for this kind of, uh, uh, kind of data repository use, to preserve the data for secondary use. And, and uh, maybe to put into the same question, so this PID, so I mean, do you, I, mean, I don't know, maybe you are on the administrative side, you say, well, everything is fine. It's fine. But, but I mean, is there kind of the appropriate infrastructure? If not, then what would be the needs? And. Uh, do you feel it's sufficiently easy to get the kind of the PIDs to the data sets and I mean, sh or should there be some kind of developments and if so, then, then what? I mean, is everything on the technical infrastructure side, is everything nice and peachy or are there needs? And if there, if there are needs, then, and actually please identify yourself and where you are from so that we know. Thank you. I'm Iris Tahvanen from Lapparanta University of Technology, and I have only one small comment. Ella Bingham's list to CSC, that vising list, was very good, and uh, according to Chair's this question, I would like to add to that list the wish that the national IDA, rep IDA repository could be more user-friendly to use. Mm -hmm. It is very clumsy and complicated to use, and many Finnish organizations uh, would like to be uh, involved to use it as mm -hmm. national resource, but it is very hard to ordinary researchers to use. Okay. I don't know if, uh, do we have anyone from CSC directly here now? Uh, Sort of. I'm not really employed by CSC, but I work half time there, and, and I don't work with IDA, Ida as such. But I know they they are aware of this problem, and and the, the drive is toward making the Ida much more simple, much more like just another another disk drive to use. So so the, all the metadata requirements will be slacker in the future, and so on. Mm. So can I ask what is the relationship of this? Okay, I'm. I'm I, I, Apologies for my naivete, but, but what, what do you feel is somehow the relationship of this uh, national EDA repository to, let's say, the domain-specific repositories or, or the university initiatives in this direction? So, I mean, um, should people in general be advised to use the EDA or domain-specific repositories? Or, I mean? Well, if I may continue. Uh, EDA is not a repository as a such, it's a storage space, so it's mm. for, for, the, for the space needs during your scientific work, and when your data set is ready, you really should be thinking about its permanent storage somewhere else. Mm. So uh, 
there will be the, the long-term preservation and mid-term preservation services available at CSC in the near future, so, so that will be the thing. And there, again, there will be requirements regarding the metadata and, and things like that. But, but IDA is more for your daily work and, mm -hmm. and daily processing okay. and so on. Yeah, I'm, yeah. actually, I, I wasn't somehow aware of this distinction. So and I'm, I'm happy uh, to, to continue to your question so that uh, uh, a good repository is a good repository. So if your discipline has uh, international systems available, so by all means use them. But, but of course, all disciplines don't have those. Mm. So, so mm. then the national solutions are available for, for at least in those cases. Yeah. yeah. So did you, Ella, want to? Can you give the mic to Ella so that I don't have to? Sure. I can keep one. So we also recommend domain-specific repositories for the best visibility of your research in your own field. Mm. But of course, it's up, up to you. OK. So um, I know the participants from other countries have similar strong feelings about the kind of the national infrastructure. Or, <laughs> so we seem to have, the Finns seem to have kind of <laughs> strong views on the available service. Nobody else is kind of uh, complaining. Or, uh, Yes, there's one. So please identify yourself, so we know. Yes, my name is Vitla Childe, and I'm working for SNIC, which is the Swedish National Infrastructure for Computing. And we are equivalent, maybe in Sweden, for the of CSC, but on much smaller scale, I would say. Mm -hmm. We are not okay. under the same. We are a collaboration of six supercomputing centers. And uh, um, when it comes up to the um, uh, national storage infrastructure, uh, historically in Sweden, um, SNCC was taking care of the HPC, mm. mo mostly and mainly. Mm. The first approach of dealing with the large-scale storage infrastructure came when SNCC became a partner in the uh, Nordic collaboration for, uh, to, to assist or create the Nordic Tier 1 center for a uh, large hardened harden collider mm. experiment. And, um, and and at that time, there were three huge research infrastructures available. Uh, I, I, I think there was a space agency, the CERN, and now we have explosion of so much more data coming from so many more research infrastructures. So we as well as CSC are providing for the active phase of the research mm -hmm. project, the storage, uh, which is based on IROTS uh, and on the DCASH uh, to the researchers. The Swedish law states that the long-term preservation is the responsibility of the universities. So we actually encourage our researchers, once they have uh, reached the static data sets, to take them back to their university and mm -hmm. find uh, Okay. Archival solutions when it comes up to the long-term preservation and archiving and uh, mm. adequate digital repositories when it comes up to making it available for publishing. Okay. And That's different from Finland. So I, many universities in Finland, also included, try to stay away from this kind of this repository business. In Sweden, the reason for that is because Swedish universities are um, governmental authorities, mm. which I suppose Swedish are, uh, Finnish are not anymore just mm, since okay. recently. So the research data actually uh, belongs or it's classified as a, a public public mm. uh, document. So okay. it, it undergoes to the uh, special, okay. it, it requires special treatment. So that's why I'm referring to archiving as a very mm. special thing and then data repositories as, as another. Okay, and nobody is ready. So mm. yes. So we, we will see what will happen. Nobody, it's not clear who, who would pay for this storage mm. or these processes. Mm. It's, and it's not only the, the storage infrastructure. As somebody mentioned, there's, there's a, a requirement for many different profiles that are going to assist and treat the data through the entire data lifecycle process. And, and PhD, PhD students are not, they haven't got any single course on data management. Mm. And it will be a core of their own mm. Uh, mm. work that they are going mm. to, to do. So are, are it would be good to start with the data management yeah. courses at universities, at yeah. least for the PhD students, and is then there some, from there, there go for that. 
Is there some hard deadline when everything should be ready in Sweden? So yesterday. <laughs> when, when, when is that? Yesterday, yesterday. Yesterday, <laughs> yesterday. Uh -huh. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, we, no, we, we, uh, I've talked to some archivists and they've said, well, we don't have resources, we don't know, we don't have know-how, we don't really know also from the legal point how to do this thing as well as the researchers, and they would just ignore the problem. Mm. So it's okay. that simple. Okay, well, that's fascinating. Okay. Um, okay, next topic is uh, about um, policies. So, so now I think all of our researcher communities are a little bit somehow in the early, let's say, kind of in the early stages of adoption, to put it politely. So, so, and and the universities and organizations too. So, so what do you think would be the most uh, kind of the most effective ways and policy ways to encourage? I mean, let's say eventually to encourage people to, to go all the way to this kind of data citation becoming an everyday practice. So, I mean, I, I guess there are many steps on the way, so there's the kind of the data needs to be set up properly and archived and managed, and, and if somewhere out there there is data citation. But somehow, what, what are the policy issues? So are, are, are the national policies sort of right? And the in, uh, kind of the incentives, incentive mechanism and everything Sticks and carrots, the right balance is everything going in the right in this way, this direction. So I, uh, of course, I'm, uh, I'm I'm not from a Nordic country, so I would be talking about the German situation. Mm. But my feeling is that there is um, th there is some some middleman lacking between between those that produce the data and that do do the do the scientific research whose output is actually data and those that have to take that up and, and do this management. So it's, it's again also about the data stewardship. But coming to policy, it's, it's a question of who is paying for that. Mm. And in Germany, it's sort of falling through the cracks because mm. the positions that would usually do this, they were cut down. So mm. if, it's all measured by research output. So I don't, I don't, if I'm a researcher, I don't get paid for making my metadata correct and providing perhaps a nice a nice uh, lab notebook uh, kind of thing for, for mm. tracing the provenance and so on. Mm. And I guess if, if we were talking about national policies, this should be addressed somehow. Mm. I, I, wanna, I don't want to say how, but there mm. is definitely a lack mm. in, in there of making this, making this gap smaller again. Mm. Yeah. So this is something that I it was called an unfunded mandate somehow that, that yeah. there is the requirement yes. that you should get this thing done but we are not going to give you any resources yes. for this just please do it so and and those facilities such such as, as as the one where i come from we don't have the knowledge the in-depth knowledge mm. about the data and the data pro mm. the data production process to document mm. that so mm. that's we mm. can just raise our hands and, and as, as sarah mm. also indicated yeah mm. Mm. we yeah. just take it yeah so it's too bad that I think the min none of the ministry people are here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, yes, indeed. Um, okay, anything kind of, what is the biggest cause of pain in the Nordic countries? I mean, why, I mean, is it about the resources that you would, let, let, okay, let, let, let's assume that there is no more money, so kind of, what's the, so, um, well, okay, so should things, okay, I'm, I'm sort of, everything comes to the money. I was going to ask, so should this go into the university's funding model? Well, yes, it should. Should this go to the uh, kind of the project assessment? Well, yes, it should. I'm trying to ask some kind of non-trivial question here. So it's all, all of a total no-brainer. So, kind of, so. I think something that's important, in the end it will always boil down to money and we need more money to, to develop all that stuff, but I think something that we should try to avoid is developing the same stuff again and again in each institution or even in each country. So I think with, and 
I'm, I'm not deeply involved and I don't know anything of the internals, but with this vision of this European Open Science Cloud as a conceptual space, not, not a data cloud that's some router, but as it's set up as something where we share common services, um, where we share common APIs, I guess that's one of the potentially big opportunities that we have to actually get those things done well knowing that not all of us will be getting any additional amount of money that we, we're going to request. So by sharing it, I guess we, we might actually have a chance to, to still do it. And when it comes to cost, we, we usually debate about the cost of doing it, but I think what, I, what we also should do is at the same time take a look at the cost of not doing it, both in terms of um, effort required to manually and in complex procedures do again and again stuff that could be automated and the, time, and the kind of money that we save by investing into those procedures. So I guess both sides are important. It's an investment that will help us save money and if we do it smartly, not individually, but across institutions and across countries, um, I, I guess we, we should be able to, to manage. I tried to get some uh, ideas in the morning session presentation from the presentation from the ministry and academy people, so kind of how, what they would see as the kind of the incentive mechanism. But I, I think at least the ministry was somehow unwilling at this stage to commit to anything specific. But but I think uh, the the agencies do have opportunities to kind of incentivize things. Do you have any great ideas of kind of a, where the incentives should somehow be put? I mean, what, what, uh, I mean, well, your, how does this, how did you get your people to kind of do the right stuff? <laughs> uh. Yeah. Um, well, I'm not entirely sure we have them all doing the right stuff at the mm. moment. It helps in my case in that, um, so the same research council that funds my um, group, funds mm. the data centres, um, NERC, Natural Environment Research Council, um, they also fund researchers to um, actually run the experiments that generate the data in the first place and part of the requirement of the researchers getting that funding is they have to offer the resulting data sets to mm. one of the NERC data centres. Mm. Now this has been a standing thing where they have to offer the data produced to one of the data centres for decades, mm. literally decades. The BADC has turned 21, mm. anyway is over 20 years old now. Um, that doesn't mean that the researchers actually did what they were told. Mm. So there was the mandate from NARC saying you must deposit your data or offer your data for deposit. Mm. Um, but there was no way that NARC had to back that threat up. So that's why we were putting so much time and effort into data citation and, and to wave in front of them as a carrot. Mm. Now it's looking like NERC actually have the ability to withhold the last 5% of the grant until the data centres sign off to say, yes, we have received the data or yes, we have looked at this project and decided that actually the data is not worth keeping. So that's the situation that we're sort of in at the moment. But it took us an awful long time mm. to get there. Yeah. Um, and even now there are some NERC funded areas of science um, where they, they have no place to put their data. Mm. Um, in the UK as well, the um, EPSRC, Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council, mm. uh, did quite a nice thing for repositories in that when EPSRC released their data policy a few years ago, they put the mandate on the institution rather than the individual researcher to make sure that the data was archived and managed properly. Mm -hmm. And this was a good thing because lots of institutions started going, oh, okay, we better do something about this. And then they started building their own institutional repositories, which, again, reinventing the wheel um, when they possibly didn't need to. But um, an awful lot of institutions now, data has become more important for them. They're looking into it. They're collaborating with each other to build repositories that will work for their researchers. Um, mm -hmm. Because I think 
a lot of the universities now have realised how valuable data can actually be for them. It's, it's a major asset to the university, just like software and other intellectual property. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. Tobias, please, yes. So, uh, th thinking about think about sticks and carrots here, isn't isn't the one one stick that the that the funding agencies have? Isn't that the data management plan? Yes. So that that's yeah. something where you could say yeah. you have to make an agreement, yeah. have to make something yeah. in upfront before starting that takes over when when yeah. you are gone, basically. Yeah. yeah, I was somehow coming to the same thing myself and it's too bad that the kind of the academy person had to run to prepare this year's the state of state of science in Finland report but um, that, so now okay to take a concrete example so now Academy of Finland which is our major research funding agency for the first time required this systematic data management plans in this autumn's call and this created kind of panic among most of the researchers. I mean, lots of people came to me asking, okay, so what is this thing? And I mean, where, where, where can I get a template that I can copy to my, my proposal? And, uh, and, uh, and I, I, will, I would have liked to ask her, okay, so how do you think this exercise succeeded? But, but you, are, you are right that now if this is kind of a part of this proposal evaluation, so there's a component where you get feedback, well, otherwise a nice proposal, but the data management plan was uh, so and so, so this teaches the researchers quite quickly to do things properly. On the other hand, it would be nice to have some kind of a models, so now people were sort of left, left, kind of a just, uh, yeah, okay. Thank you. Yes, um, I don't want to be the pessimist here, but I think and is not the solution for this because mm. actually the academy has um, demanded a kind of a yeah. research management plan since 2008. And uh, since then, um, some of the research projects have uh, uh, in their mm. research plan that they will archive the data to FSD. Mm. And uh, as we don't know, the inf we don't have the information which mm. ones have, we just know that many of them have, and mm. we still are not getting the data. Mm -hmm. uh, some of it, but not all of it, mm. that's for sure. Mm. So somebody should do the policy. Okay, so there should some, be some assessment also that things have been done as promised. Mm. Yes, okay. But again, with, with data management plans, since you quoted them as an example now for policies, is uh, when they were introduced and the way they were introduced, they were very successful in raising awareness for the issues to be discussed, to be discussed and considered by the researchers. They are relatively useless for really doing data management. I mean, they are free-form text documents where you, and usually written at a very early stage. They are not being kept and maintained in most cases as a living document as they should be. Uh, you need to fill them manually and you can't monitor them, you can't act on them. So what we are currently working on heavily is again integrating them within a research infrastructure where a lot of the stuff is pre-filled, where there are triggers that require you to switch from freeform text document initially where you, you know, at the start of an outline of a project start writing what you plan to do, that at a certain stage you actually need to link it to a whatever persistent identifier pointing to the data where we automate processes such as why do I need to fill out the metadata description of the file formats, for example, when there are services that can compute that and provide it for me. So as, again, with data management plans, if we want them to be successful, we need to put the infrastructure in place that takes the burden away from the researcher on providing a lot of technical, administrative, and so on metadata that should come from elsewhere and in some cases can be harvested automatically in professional research infrastructures. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is a vision. It, it's mm. not in place anywhere. But once we are talking about establishing research infrastructures, we should think the big picture and think the entire research process where we can actually automate things mm. to make it happen. And only then can we have a, a reasonable policy that is also accepted by the researchers, seeing that it doesn't put too much additional burden mm. onto them. 
Beyond that, people will always try to avoid additional effort if they don't see the, the trade-off mm -hmm. between work and benefit. Yeah. 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 Maybe there should be some co-data co -data working group on researcher initiatives. So how do the researchers to comply? With this? Uh, well, well we, we were also talking about the open science, I think you were raising that, right, the European Open Science Cloud. Um, I mean, you, you just mentioned, yeah, this is a vision and not in place, but couldn't the European Open Science Cloud provide such a service that exactly does that? Because this is, this is happening right now, right? It is, it is something where you can start with. It is starting right now. Yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay, so I have one more topic. I have one more question. So the topic is about the issues discussed here. So the presentations and kind of ideas where things might be going and and how we should proceed. So are there are there some kind of a issues, kind of concern? Kind of I don't know the proposed uh, standards or policies or frameworks or somehow that somehow that you feel that things don't, don't, don't look right. I mean, I mean, there are problems. I mean, get the, getting the infrastructure there and getting the researchers to comply and, and getting the steward support and the funding and so. But do you feel that there is something in this whole enterprise that is somehow going in the wrong direction? So, yeah, okay, I guess, I guess he wouldn't be here if we were kind of uh, ludicrous on this. Okay, so now, well, just, okay, so well, one, just, just one, one devil's advocate comment. Well, I mean, is, is, it, is it really worth all the trouble talking about data citation? Is it, is it really doing what, what, we, what we hope and assume it is doing? That, that would be, that would be sort of the antithesis to, mm. to what you just indicated, right? Mm. So is, is it just, are we just making a big fuss and nothing is happening? Mm. Yeah, okay, good. But that's, good. you know, yeah. I, I don't answer that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess there are many steps along the way before we are in the state of citation stage except for kind of local settings. But, but you think that the data citations um, kind of might not be a worthwhile goal. I mean, for all this effort. So maybe it's maybe it's um, what do you call it? An, an, an illusion of perception, mm. something like that. Maybe we're, we are missing some some big elephant. But uh, mm. I, I just asked the question. I I, I don't yeah, know what it actually would be. So yeah, I don't. But it's something better. Yeah. Yeah. But it's because it's, it's a lot of work and a lot of effort, so somehow it's good to ask if you are kind of doing the right thing. Okay, so then the final question, which I would like now like maybe to first focus on the, on the kind of the, the speakers, and because I, I want you to answer, and some of you have had the opportunity to think about this ahead of time. So, so let's assume that we take the data citation as a target. I mean, despite the <laughs> kind of the uh, parenthesized doubts here, so or devil's thinking. So, so, so what what is the kind of the biggest challenge on this road? What is the biggest roadblock, and what is the most important action to take to move in that direction? So, what's the biggest challenge? And what's the most important action? And let's go in the order of the presentation. So, Sarah. Yes. What's the problem with being first? Um, and what somehow? What's the thing on which we should focus our main efforts? What's missing from? The well, I think um, for the Nordic countries, if I'm going to talk to you as directly, it's um, don't try and reinvent the wheel if the wheel already exists and you can kind of nick the same design as anybody else. I mean, in the UK, 
um, where we've done quite a lot in terms of data citation and, and other countries around in, and in Europe and the States, we've done a lot. So um, we're always more than willing to share um, our experiences and in, mm. in, what we've learned and, and the difficult things like, oh, we really wish this in this way rather than the way we actually did it, which actually turned out to be more complicated than it was worth sort of thing. So. Um, L yeah, learn, learn from learn from what's already out there if you can. But then also, I think be aware of the fact that there's not going to be a one size fits all solution, um, and don't uh, if we, we can't ever have one perfect standard to rule everything um, because science is too big and too diverse, um, and that's just science. We're not talking about all the other data that gets collected and mm. dealt with. Um, so yeah, I think I think that'd be uh, learn from others' experiences, but be aware that. They won't necessarily have the ones mm. that will suit you, so mm. pick and choose, mm. I think. So, what's the most important action? Most important action? Go and talk to people about it, raise awareness. If you, um, I, I'm constantly surprised, I still keep going to scientific meetings and I talk about data citation like everybody knows what it is, and, th and then I have researchers going, uh, what, what do you mean? I, I don't understand. Explain this to me. So um, go out and be an advocate for data citation and publication. Talk to people about it in the corridor, in the coffee lounge, over lunch. Um, and yeah, um, just spread the word basically because there's an awful lot of people out there who, are sti who still don't. Okay, thanks. Next in speaker order is, I think, you. Um. I guess the biggest challenge and, and action are tightly, tightly coupled. In, in my perspective, I think the biggest challenge is to enable research to actually do it and enable data centers to do it, and for that we need the services. And that's for me the, the clear action is, I'm, I'm not saying now stop talking, start doing, but <laughs> so I'm not contradicting you, Sarah, but I, I think we should start doing and developing those services and making them available. And if it turns out not to be the perfect service that's improved the service, but we should start building those, building on top of existing best practice that is out there, or good practice, if we can't call it best practice yet. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, evolve the, the service framework around it, and then researchers and users and data centers will come, come following. Cool, oh, thanks. Tobias, I didn't give you these questions ahead of time, but maybe you can contribute. Um, what I personally perceive as the biggest challenge is the thing about service evaluation. So actually getting feedback on what services are, are good, how they could be improved from the actual users, because the actual users are really hard to get. So mm -hmm. that is that what I see as the biggest challenge. And of course the action would then be to yeah, to, uh, to to do a to do ev evaluation and preferably also um, across across communities, institutions. Okay, thanks. And Isabek, I think you were next. Okay. Yeah, well, well, something similar to that. Uh, building a national service as you know, services as I am doing the. The real challenge for me is to, to get the dialogue going on with real researchers. Mm -hmm. so, so there's a gap, and it's not my fault entirely. So, uh, so uh, researchers have other priorities on the, on, on the short scale. They do research and they, they uh, apply for grants, and this is their daily breadwinner. And, and, and uh, my is a different, but if you can find uh, Suspectable researchers who would be interested in, in putting some time and effort to these things, please uh, tell me about it. Yeah. Okay. Ella. Well, can you repeat the question, please? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, or, in, in, so in, much has been said already. In order yeah. to kind of uh, solve all the problems that we are facing in. Yeah. Kind of a, uh, getting data management in the repositories and this is everything right, and so yeah. that eventually we can have data citations. So what what is the biggest roadblock? What's the biggest challenge on the on, along the way? Um, I think it is the mindsets of the researchers because this is extra work. Of course, we are building services 
to help them in every possible way, but in the end we cannot really do it even if uh, we cannot do it if the researcher is not there next to us giving advice on mm. how could we best help him or her. Okay. And what's the most important action to somehow I believe in the this science community in solving this problem so that this comes standard practice as has happened with journal article citations so mm. People will see the need for themselves and act accordingly, and this will, of course, take time. Mm. But how do you, what's the action? So now you are kind of wishing that, the, or expect, expecting the community will discover the benefits and on their own. Is there, is there well, something well, that uh, we well, as... The action is to provide help and support and uh, encouragement and um, the teaching materials. Mm and maybe have some prominent figures like showing the way, mm -hmm. showing good example, okay. like yesterday, the, the people who were, who okay. who were cool. given these prizes. Okay, we'll make note of this. Okay, so then the floor is open for further comments on this, and you please identify yourself and where you come from. Thomas yeah. Alatraff, here, Social Science Data Archive. Uh, this is not, I mean, probably not a big challenge or something, but uh, many times when you listen to uh, presentation like this or well, presentations like yesterday, we say uh, the, this requires cultural change. Mm. And then usually after that you say, well, change is happening, but it's not quite he here yet. And it's been going on for quite a while. And I, I kind of uh, think uh, this is sort of relates to what Ella said about uh, do we do enough? Uh, are we able to do enough to actually uh, make the change happen? Uh, because it might be an, our illusion that there is a change happening. If, if it's not, then we probably should uh, uh, think out of the box and figure out if the services we provide, if the um, sort of the ideal, if the incentives, if they are the correct ones, if, or if we actually think with a carrot instead of feeding it. Mm. Uh, so this is something I, I, I guess sort of not looking to mm. researchers, but looking inside, thinking about research services and. Uh, people are mm. who work in this, uh, on mm. this field. Yeah. yeah. I do know from my local community that they yes, are not terribly well aware of all these wonderful developments in open data and open science and yet. So Ella and I, we have lots of work ahead of us. So, <laughs> this. so uh, okay. So other views? So the cultural change needs to happen and we need to figure out how to make this come about. And sort of, not sort of, seriously. So, so it, it's, it's, it's my, I, I sort of agree that, I mean, this cultural change doesn't happen completely on its own. So there needs to be some activity and driving and kind of wisdom in kind of moving the community in the right direction. Uh, I think it was you who's you I think who's who indicated this about uh, the management courses for for the actual PhD students mm. and I mean that is that is one mm. good way to change okay. the culture because those are the people coming coming from the bottom again. Yes, so it's yeah. Yeah. actually Petri, there is a, oh, yeah, among his other duties, he is the head of our Helsinki area ICT doctoral education network, so we we'll make this an item in our doctoral education for the ICT students. But at least talk about this. Yes. Okay, more comments. Okay, so it's five minutes past four, so I guess it's time to end the day and, and uh, let me thank you all again for a kind of a most inspiring meeting and a kind of an excellent discussion. I'm, I'm really happy that we somehow I, we moved away from the panel to kind of more open discussion. This was, I think, was a kind of a very informative and good, good discussion. And, and particularly want to talk, thank our speakers for uh, taking the time to prepare their presentations and come here and, and join us in, in this event. And, 
And uh, I hope you have a good trip back home and, and kind of uh, keep up the good work. How was this? I uh, you, you had this nice kind of postcard, which was kind of a... Oh, they keep calm and cite data. Yeah, keep calm and cite data, so, okay. I suggest we give a round of applause to Becca, who has done an immense uh, job.